I'm going to talk about using Google Analytics and other free tools for SEO. And um, um, people who know me and people who don't know me. So let's do a small introduction. So this was on the website. This is me. So uh, a short introduction, but nobody loves reading. So I'll do it myself. So I'm Arnon Hellemans. I basically, I've been freelancing in SEO and mostly SEO in analytics. So search and analytics uh, for the past almost 12 years. I live in Amsterdam. I work for uh, small clients, large clients, corporate, like big corporations, multinationals and all the, everything in between. Um, what I love doing is optimizing using data. So what I'm going to explain today is a bit on what I've been doing and how I have um, found some really interesting nuggets in free tools and Google Analytics. So without further ado, uh, I just want to say that please put in your Q&A, uh, which you should be able to do. Um, I'm going to I basically have 10 to 15 minutes at the end to uh, to get into your questions. So please do. Uh, the other thing I'm going to add is that the slides will be shared. Uh, I'll upload them to SlideShare probably. Um, and so you'll be able to find everything there. Oh, and by the way, I used a little trick. So you can also take pictures of um, QR codes which is fun, right? Okay, let's get started. So Google Analytics for SEO. Now, a lot of people, they, um, a lot of SEOs, they mostly live by rank trackers and search console, and not a lot of them are actually looking for the nuggets that are in Google Analytics and can always be used. So I'm just gonna explain a few of the things I always check. Uh, that you can also start using. So for me, the must have reports in Google Analytics are the following. Referral traffic. So I don't see a lot of people checking the referring uh, referral traffic. What I do see is a lot of things in there which you can use, uh, whether it's um, new uh, referrers coming in, which means you've got a new link, which is driving traffic, which is, is cool. Um, but another thing is I see a lot of alternative search engines ending up in referral traffic. So I'm going to explain how to fix that. Because if you can bucket them into organic traffic, you will show at least your clients or your boss that you're growing organic traffic. And I foresee more and more search engines to start popping up with the whole privacy discussion. The second one is a very simple one. It is looking at 404 titles with source medium. I'm going to get into that. And the third one is, in my opinion, the coolest one, is that you, there is a way to fix direct traffic which is actually Google traffic. So I'm going to elaborate on that a little further down the line. OK, so let's see search engines in referral traffic. So one of the things you'll see is that, let me, yeah, there we go. So these are new referrers for this particular Google Analytics. So you, I, you see search to go browser, you see uh, PTOL search, you see uh, presearch.org. These are new search engines. Is this a lot? Well, this is a massive site, so it's not a lot, but everything adds up. So please check your uh, referral um, report in Google Analytics. And just do a simple thing where you just add the word search or uh, probably it's search. And you'll find loads of them. And also manually just scroll through. Take a longer period of time and then you need to uh, start fixing those kind of things. So 
how do you fix this? Oh, no, the second one is filter pages on 404 titles. Again, it's very simple, but very effective. So what you do is you basically take the, um, you, you just put in a fake URL. So take your domain name, put your name at the end. You probably won't have, um, won't have a page. So it will generate a 404. Now look up the page title. And the page, if the page title is something like 404 page not found or uh, sorry, we didn't find this page or hey, it looks you're lost or anything like that. What you can, what you can do is you go into um, your content report, then go into the second tab, which is uh, title and then do a search on 404. So in this case we did, as you can see on the right top, it says page 404 not found. And then the second thing you do is you add a secondary dimension, which you can find um, just above the results. And there you, you select um, source medium. And now it becomes very interesting because you'll see referral domains. You might see PPC traffic or Facebook traffic or other ad traffic. Um, and when you see these kind of things, what do you do with them? I think most of you can already see where I'm going here. Um, so the actions to take on this 404 traffic. You 301 redirect the pages to relevant pages, right? Because these are clicks from external web pages to your domain. Um, and now they are basically uh, getting served at 404. So it doesn't help your ranking. It doesn't help the user. So it's fairly simple. Just redirect the 404, uh, the old URL to a relevant new URL. And this is another interesting thing, right? So when, when I go into uh, new projects with new clients, it's one of the first reports I set up because often they ask me to help on their analytics or their SEO. But when I start building this one, you can see that you'll find paid traffic clicks. So these are paid ads from say Facebook or Twitter or other advertising platforms or even Google ads. And they are sent to a 404 page, which is like wasting money, right? So an easy fix there is to fix the paid ads. Okay, and the second thing I was talking about is the search engine. So I already hit on it two, uh, two slides ago. So this is the link and the QR code that goes to the same link, which shows you all the default search engines that Google has defined for Google Analytics. So if your search engines, which are in your referral traffic, they are not in that list. So basically they're bucketed as uh, referral traffic and not SEO traffic or organic search traffic. So how do you fix this? So you go on to a property level in the admin account of Google Analytics. So uh, click uh, on the right, left bottom, there is like an admin, um, how do you call it? Um, an admin uh, link. You click on it, you go on to the property level, and then you go into tracking info. So this is where your tracking code is. And what you'll see is that there's a, a little thing there called organic search sources. This is where you can add a search engine. So now you um, take the referral domain, the refer, and you do a search on that search engine. So you go to the URL, you do a search, and then you'll see a, a Q or a P, which is the query parameter. And you basically, Basically, you create a filter. So this filter will now make sure that any refers that comes in, come in 
through searchbekovi.com are being bucketed as SEO traffic, which is a simple fix and a win because now it's contributing to the SEO benefit. Simple, but effective. And this is where I really love, this is what got me really excited. I'm gonna show you a little uh, GIF. I was, or tell you a little story. I think that's the better way of doing this is I was in a call with one of my long uh, uh, clients that I've had for many, many years. And he's also become a friend. This is a, a, grow, a fast growing company in the UK. And um, I was having a boring meeting. We all sometimes have boring meetings, right? Um, so I got distracted um, and I was opening a little uh, report in this is what my face looked like. You can, you can literally see me go, holy crap, what did I just discover? I don't, like, I wish this would have been live so I could see people go interact and, and, and maybe I could do an, a little ask on, on what, uh, what I discovered. But what I actually discovered had something to do with this. So the dreaded direct, nobody likes direct. Direct traffic is, I call it the shithole of analytics. So any hands or any guesses as to what uh, Google Analytics direct traffic actually means? I call it the shithole of analytics for, for a reason. So here we go. Direct is source exactly matches direct. Really? Have you ever seen that? And medium exactly matches not set or medium exactly matches none. So basically, in a little background, uh, tracking on Google Analytics works through a refer or a UTM code. So a refer means a previous domain. So this could be google.com or it could be uh, t.co, which is like the Twitter URL shortener, or it could be, uh, I don't know, uh, arnathelmans.com, right? Um, so those are refers. So this is from web page to web page. If that isn't there, um, the only way for Google to identify the source and the medium is by having UTM codes or Google Click IDs because Google Analytics only supports Google Ads by default. The rest needs UTMs. Um, so it's basically the shithole, right? So if this is really big, then you have a problem. Now, this was the report I was looking at. So I selected a secondary dimension called full referral path. Now I can see somebody going like, well, but I've never seen that dimension. It's not there. No, it's not. It's, some that, it's one that was created um, by a friend of mine who used to work at this company. But the really interesting thing, what you'll see is I saw direct, so direct none, which is the shithole. Eh? We can see that in here. This is all direct, nothing. But when I added the secondary dimension, you saw, I saw these kind of things popping up. So it said direct none, but Android app, com, Google, Android, quick search, and then google.com. What is that? That was weird, but it was a big pointer, at, which blew my mind, is that suddenly for a lot of the direct traffic, I could actually see that it did have a refer. So there was something being sent. So I could potentially fix part of my direct traffic. Now, 
this is what I figured out it was. So this is my home screen, my phone, right? So there is a big G box. I use Android, probably a lot of people. This is where I would have asked the question, raise your hand if you use Android. Well, I can't, but I suspect a group of you will be using Android. And then there's this Google search box in the middle. When you do a search on there, this is what you get. It takes over your home screen. So I searched digital zone, right? So now digital zone comes up. And then I click through to an awesome conference. There we are, the awesome conference. But there was no refer because this is an Android app. And this is not an HTTP page. So there is no refer, or is there? So that fix I just shown would identify this not as direct, but as an actual visit from a search, AKA it's search traffic. It's if we're optimizing, if we're responsible for the SEO, or if we are optimizing for search engines, we can now show that we've driven more traffic. So what you need to do on this, and at the end, there is a long, uh, uh, there's a link to a very extensive guide I've written on this, because I think everyone in the audience should at least set this up for their Google Analytics account. So you set up the custom dimension. Um, I'm going to go a little faster, but there is like a long read with, uh, I think a really good guide on how to do this. You set up a custom dimension with a full referral path session based. Um, and then what you do is, I use Google Tag Manager for this. You pick the refer field in Tag Manager and you just parse it in. That's it, nothing more. So what, I, what is actually happening is there is a referring domain, but because it's not HTTP, it's being ignored by Google Analytics. So it's basically Google Analytics is their fault, right? But then again, it's a free tool, uh, so. <laughs> We'll forgive them. So once you have all of this, you can now start rewriting the sources and medium. Again, this is all in the long list. So you pick the full referral path session. You uh, then do a uh, advanced filter. Um, and then you rewrite everything. So you're going to rewrite uh, Google Android quick uh, search source, the medium, but the same happens with LinkedIn apps, with the Gmail Android app, with all of those. So this is really interesting because now you can, if somebody forgets to add a UTM tag to their emails they send out, a lot of the traffic will become direct because people open it in their Gmail app on Android and then they will click the link which opens in Gmail and there will, won't be a refer. So you won't be able to see how well your email marketing is performing, right? And now you can at least see, see that. Okay, so here's the link. You can take a photograph, it goes to the same URL or you go to omt.tips recover direct traffic GA. Ha, ah, that was the part where I'm going to talk about Google Analytics. Now, another, <coughs> sorry, another really cool uh, thing, which I love using, and that is Google Search Console. Now, I bet every one of you has been in Google Analytics, uh, Google Search Console, the same as Google Analytics. The issue I have with Google Analytics is that Back in the days, it was way more trustworthy. Um, I think it was the 18th of August 2018 when they started taking away some impressions. So when you would filter, it would take up more. 
So we all know this. We all know how to log in. So I use a free Sheets, Google Sheets add-in. And it is search analytics for Sheets. And this is what it does. It connects to the API of Google Analytics and gives you the data for both uh, uh, your query as well as the page that ranks. So this is something which just gives you more and more information. So just go to search analytics for sheets. You'll find it in the add-in sections at, um, at Google Sheets as well. Um, it's an awesome tool, um, but there are some drawbacks. But first, I'm going to give you some tips on how to use this. So definitely try this out if you have a smaller a blog uh, site that a personal blog. Just try it out, and you'll you'll find some real cool nuggets in here. So, what are my biggest tips for uh, the search analytics for sheets? It don't filter requests from the API. So just get all the data in you want and then start filtering in sheets. So don't filter the API because then you have the same issues you have when you use the web interface where it filters out stuff. So just get all the data in. Um, sometimes it times out uh, if you have a too long time period with too many rows. Uh, then take a shorter period. But it works like a charm. So it combines keyword and landing page. So you can see overlap, cannibalization, kind of, kind of all of that. Um, but again, um, if your site is too big, if you have too much traffic, congrats, but then this doesn't work. I'll give you a tip on how to use that as well. And link your sheet with Google Data Studio for more advanced analytics and dashboards and all of that. You can also schedule these downloads, which is also really cool. Um, it's the way I got started uh, using this kind of data. Now, when you have a bigger site, congratulations, uh, or way more data, um, so either more landing pages or just massively more traffic, then don't use the native connector in Google Data Studio because it uses the native API, uh, which if you filter anything, it filters on that. So you'll have filtered results, which sell, which tell you less of the truth, right? You can use your own uh, or, or build your own uh, data store where you just uh, connect to the API, get all the data day by day, and then uh, use the data store. It can be any database, or you can use BigQuery, or you can do whatever you want, and then build on that. Or you could use uh, Search Explorer. So this is a friend of mine, Noah Lerner, who, who started building this, and I've been testing it, and it's really cool. It does all kinds of neat filtering and use cases, and, and it's currently in beta. So you can sign up for it. So this is the link. It's, it's a good way to get started if you have a bigger site. Yep. And then last but not least, I don't think a lot of people are using this, but it's pretty awesome. Um, Bing Webmaster Tools. And I, I can hear people think like, why would he use Bing? Like their market share is virtually not, not there, right? Um, but um, I met with um, their head of, I think, Bing Webmaster Tools, uh, Frédéric, he, who has just sadly just left Microsoft. But he told me about three years ago in Boston when I was tech SEO boost, he told me that Bing Webmaster Tools would be giving, giving away way more free information. And that would be greatly improved. So my biggest problem always is, how do I get Bing uh, Webmaster Tools validated, right? So you have to do a DNS, a TXT record, or a CNAME record, or, or a uh, meta tag on the page. And these are things that a lot of clients, they don't feel the need for that. 
So they listened, and what they did is you can now import all of your verified sites from Google Search Console with Google. So just log in as Google with your Google account that has all the verified, very, verified sites, and then you can just pull all of the verifications in. And now you've got all of your sites in Bing Webmaster Tools, which is pretty cool because you can do the following. You get a lot of backlink data and response codes. So you will be able to find uh, backlinks going to pages that now get a 404 or a 5XX, which is a 500, um, which is basically broken link building. So it's free, free to use for that. Um, and you'll get it. So broken links uh, ending on uh, 4XX and 5XX. So pretty cool. However, they have hidden this, so you need to use this URL. And then in the URL, just put your full domain in with HTTP. And then you'll get all of this information. They'll probably get rid of it at some point, but for now, it still works, right? The other really cool thing is free backlink data. So, of course, as any SEO, I use backlink tools as well, right? Uh, SEMrush, Ahrefs, Link Research Tools, um, all of them, right? Um, but Bing gives you a lot of that information for free. So it's just another source which will help you, right? So I took my own website, which doesn't have a lot of backlinks. Um, I'm not actively pursuing that. Um, but what you'll see is it will give you the anchor text, the pages, the domains it, that they come from. So it's very easy to get all of this information. And you can export all of it very easily. So yeah, it's just another free source. Like, who doesn't like free? I'm a Dutch guy. We love free, right? So the other cool thing you can do is you can compare backlink data. So in this case, I compared uh, my own domain with a good friend, Bastian Grimm and Aleda, who spoke, I think, I believe yesterday. So we looked at, uh, I looked at what are their anchor texts. <laughs> I love the second one where it says, for Bastian Grimm, it says, always strives for excellence, which is a pretty cool anchor text, right? So I just hope it's not, on one of his own sites linking that way. But it's a very easy way. So you can now find uh, your competitors' links as well and their anchor text. You can do all of that within um, Bing Webmaster Tools. Like, pretty cool. And so now it's really easy. So next step you do when this is finished or when you have a break, um, just log in with your Google account, import all of your sites, and a few days later, you'll have all this information. And that was it. That was it. Uh, I wish this could have been in real life because I love meeting people and chatting about and doing all of that. But um, if you have any questions, just um, follow me on Twitter or ping me on Twitter. would love that. Uh, please let me know how... What, what was your biggest takeaway in here? Um, love to learn, uh, love to get feedback. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Just say, uh, well, I just saw your session on uh, Digital Zone. Happy to connect then. And if you have any questions, just connect me uh, through these forums. Um, I guess that was it. And I hope there's questions. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was really uh, nice to hear all your tips and all your slides were really interesting. And uh, we already have some questions here. Uh, and uh, I can tell to our attendees if you have any questions to Arnold, you can just uh, type the QA button in the uh, inside the chat box, I guess, in the right hand side.
yeah. uh, of your screen. So we are waiting for your questions because we still have some time. Uh, if you want, I can read some of the questions, Arnold, for you. Please do. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, hello, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, what are the ways to filter spam traffic from direct traffic? Uh, is excluding the country's only option since we cannot see the source? Oh, well, there is there is uh, loads of ways, right? So if you get a lot of spam traffic, um, and I must admit, I actually build a tool that does this, uh, that can spam, uh, but I'm not going to use it. It's purely for uh, educational purposes. Um, so what you what you can do is you need to find a pattern. So what you often see is that um, uh, direct traffic comes in, um, has no time on site, looks at weird pages, and then build a filter uh, around that. Right. So if uh, or look at the device. So loads of them, they have um, um, user agents, which you can filter on. Um, some of them have IP ranges you can filter on. Look at your log files, right? So there's different ways to spam Google, Google Analytics, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't be, how do you call it? Overly, um, don't really worry about spam. Uh, if it becomes too much, then there's then you dig in. You set up a filter saying if uh, yeah there is ways to protect against it. But I think the difficult part is it depends. The same with anything in SEO, right? <laughs> yeah. So I can't really um, give you a pointer. But if you have a use case, just ping me on Twitter or LinkedIn. I'll have a look on how I can help you with that. Great. So great tips. So uh, Zainab, you should maybe. Follow if if you if you didn't start following, uh, you should follow on Twitter and ask. Uh, we have two more questions. Yeah. Uh, is your wise having a direct traffic or UTM or another alternative is the same? Uh, it's just about analytics. There is a question like, can you see the questions? Yeah, as yeah. Uh, okay. SEO wise having direct traffic or UTM. Uh, or another alternative is the same, right? It's just about analytics. It is. It doesn't. So a UTM is purely for tracking uh, 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 purposes only. However, um, in an age where we will become more data driven, we need to be able to trust the data. If the data just says, get me more direct traffic, but direct traffic is the shithole of analytics. It's like, how are you going to get that, right? So if, say, 40% of that traffic is actually email traffic, now you have a clear mission to get more subscribers for your newsletters because they drive a lot of conversions, right? So, so for me, that's, that's a, a really good one. Yeah. Uh, so we have another question. How can we track uh, 404 pages, 404 error pages on... Uh, Google Analytics 4. So I think ga 4 has page titles, or at least titles. Uh, you can find those events, I believe. And then you can do the same filter. So it will basically get you the same things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's the way. Um, I think there is also a guide I found on how to do this. So just ping me. Uh, I can't. I can't pronounce your first name. Go, 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 yes, go. correct, correct. This, yeah. Uh, so uh, just uh, just ping me and I'll, I'll send you a guide on it. Um, I can also see the, the last one. Uh, yes. Tamar, Ibrahim. Data-wise, is it better to use a GA or GA4? So this is an interesting one, right? Um, so GA4 is a completely new way to track um, um, to track uh, things because GA is very much page view based and GA4 is event based. So it's way more customizable. Um, one of the reasons is if you have an app, which is so Firebase is the predecessor of GA4, where you have to set everything you want to track as an event. Now, GA4 has that 
uh, built in for a lot of things, but you have to add stuff in. Uh, I think GA4 is actually definitely the way forward. However, there is a, a big challenge with GA4 is, um, but all of my previous years, it's GA data. So how am I going to compare my performance for last year to next year where I'm using GA4? Yeah. So that's going to be the challenge. I think, um, to be honest, we are all going to move to GA4 because they're just going to kill normal GA <laughs> at some point. So um, we'd better get used to it, right? Yeah. Um, exactly. There's one more that just came in Yes. Um, from Mehmet. What's your advice to follow content performance by using custom dimensions? Um, so let's see. What's your advice to follow content performance using custom dimension? So if you have enough dimensions, so EA GA 360, uh, you can do loads of things, right? So you can add like the publisher, the pu publish time. You can do, um, if you use uh, something like WordLift, you can put in the tags, uh, the category uh, it was published in. Um, like all of that, you can do those in content, but it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. So what's the goal you want to achieve with uh, content performance? Like, what are you trying to improve? Do you want to see which resonates the most with your audience? Then it should be something like a topic or a, a tag or a category. If you want to see who of your writers slash authors is the best in writing good content, then get the author in, into your custom dimensions. So, you know, with all these questions, it's about, you know, it's, it's, it's about, uh, it depends. It depends on what your goal is, what you want to achieve with that. So there is no one good answer. Thank you. Uh, so, and then there was a, a, a nice comment by Fabrice, uh, GA4 doesn't have conver conversion rate shit all of analytics. Ah, so here's the thing. Um, I often get asked the question, like, what's a good conversion rate? Now, we all know the question, right? There is no good conversion rate. A good conversion rate is if you maximize uh, your money-making capabilities, right? Uh, for some products, uh, co good conversion rate can be 10%. But I can easily, if I just get you more traffic, shitty traffic, uh, your conversion rate goes down because it's it's basically looking at how many goals divided by the number of sessions, which is ridiculous, right? Um, when should someone disavow links from a source uh, on... Ah, so... So here, here um, so there a few things, right? Um, when uh, that the 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 page linking to you uh, is blocked by, say, malware bytes or any other, um, how do you call it, spammy? Uh, no, not spam. Um, um, malware tool, then definitely disavow. Um, if it's completely irrelevant, like porn or pills or like all of that, and you are in a completely different niche, you can definitely disavow. What you'll find is that a lot of links you'll find in Bing Webmaster Tools are auto-generated shitty links, which is, uh, so it's a great source for disavowing. Um, but I tend to not disavow too much for the pure reason that I've, I've removed links using disavow, and then when I removed them from my disavow, my rankings went up again. So it told me that Google wasn't that good in distinguishing what is good and bad, right? Um, okay, and then the, should we do that to the last one? Are you, how do you measure and compare channels performance without conversion rates? Um, so this is an interesting Fabrice because um, you can look at uh, conversion rates or micro conversion rates that's um, 
that's a, a, a really good way of measuring. But it all it also really depends on, uh, say, uh, landing page and um, and have you looked at how much have we invested in a channel and how much was the profit for us? So don't look at conversion rates, but if you found a really cheap channel that easily pays for the cost of getting the traffic in, um, even though the conversion rates are lower, it's definitely worth investing in, right? So here's another tip you guys might want to use is don't send revenue to Google Analytics. Try to send profit. So if you sell something for 100 euros or $100, uh, it costs 80. So you shouldn't send 100. You should only send 20. Because that is the profit you're making. And that profit should pay for the traffic source, not the other way around. So if you are want to measure and compare channels, so the first thing you need to make sure is that the data is cleansed. So I talked about direct traffic and those kind of things. So first get a clean uh, traffic source because otherwise it doesn't, uh, it's not working to compare channels. Um, and then like the next thing is don't just look at conversion rate. It's a way to compare, but look at how profitable the whole thing is. And I mean, it, it takes way longer, but it's a completely different session. What's the difference between a site that's secure or not? Um, uh, Google has been pushing secure sites, but if any of you has worked in, uh, say, South America, that like I think 60 or 70% of websites are not secure. So again, it's an, it depends, right? Um, so do you want to uh, disavow uh, a non-secure site? Not directly. Some of them can be really good links. Um, so I don't really get the name Nizar, but I think uh, you're asking like if it's SSL or not. Um, that those are so HTTPS or non-HTTPS. What do you consider for setting up funnels for e-commerce websites? Um, I still really love um, the enhanced e-commerce, but really think it through. Um, uh, let's see, what would you, uh, let, um, so that works. And in GA4, there's plenty of other things you can do for, for measuring the funnels. Uh, <laughs> I think the goal here is, so the, the problem GA has is that you're not actually following a user. It just counts the number of, uh, of, of actual events or, or, or pages. So it, it's not on a user level. I think GA4 is. So in that case, uh, move to GA4. But for now, comparing, uh, what I personally do is I have GA4 and the normal GA running um, at the same time. OK. Go to York, uh, an example for disavow question. Yeah, please ping me. I don't know if we have time, uh, but ping me on Twitter or uh, DM me. Um, I'll, uh, I'll be able to help or, sh or might be able to help. That was it. I hope. Um, ah. uh, so I found a website with really good domain rate but they are giving back to tens of thousands of domains. Uh, if, if it doesn't look shady, if, it, if there's no malware on there, if, if they just check uh, an in URL with the domain name, if, if all of the pages are indexed, if the majority is indexed, then you should be good to go. I guess that was it, right? Yeah, that was it. Thank you so much. There are many questions and uh, thank you for your time. It was great for us. Uh, that's really cool. Thanks.